Thank you for joining the January 29th, 2019 Volta Call. We have a few items on our agenda for today's discussion. Keep in mind we record the sessions and post them to YouTube, so we'll need to remember that during the discussions and any presentations if we have any today. And with that, I think I'll go ahead and get started. So we do have one potential add to the agenda for today that was not on when I sent it out last night. I believe we'll have a, a brief discussion on IGMP from Sarisha. So this was sort of a follow-up uh, discussion that was planned. We had the earlier presentation from Amit, and then we were going to have an additional one from Sarisha. So we'll hopefully get that in today. We do have a number of new JIRA issues to review as well. And I wanted to do a quick follow-up on the repo strategy discussion that's going on on Volta Discuss. And I did see, Chip, I saw that you made another um, contribution to the discussion today. So we can maybe start from there. And then with any remaining time, go into status updates for the work in progress for Sprint 12 of Volta 2.0. And with that, I think, Let's see, we'll go ahead and get started reviewing new JIRA. Let me get to the right screen. Okay, and the first new one we have in here is Vol 1425. This was one that we talked about last time we met in terms of discussion on documentation and if we should transition that documentation to Gitbook. So Zach did open up a task Jira for us to with some detail for the discussion. And Eric, you may need to go on mute. Thank you. All right. So I, I think probably our best thing to do is for folks to take a look at this, and then we can either start some comments in here and then probably schedule a follow-up session with Zach to have some targeted uh, back and forth Q&A and discussion during one of our recurring meetings. Any comments before we move on to the next item? All right, next one that we have is Volta 2.0 core scalability testing. So that was added in as one of the 2.0 uh, stories and for tracking, and this is noting here also that scalability testing will be utilizing BBSIM and the containerized OpenOLT adapter. Any comments or questions from the group? All right. Next item was a new defect that was opened, and this one is full 1427, incorrect outport unpacking. This was opened by Ken and is already done. Any uh, quick comments, Ken, that you would like to make? Uh, no, not really. It was, it was a okay. bug that we did. It's just a bug, awesome. so we did it, so it's just done. All right, thank you. Next item is 1428. This one is to remove BBSIM OLT adapter uh, because it is now using the open OLT adapter. So Shad has that one in progress. Any questions from the group? Okay, uh, next item is a new task for 1429, add ability to bypass transaction process when the core is in single mode. Actually, that's done as well. I, I should move ah. that to them. Okay, so. let, me, let me go ahead and actually just to done. Thanks. Any questions from the group? Okay. Next item is Vol 1430 EA Poll Responder Inside BBSIM. So this one is in progress uh, by Keita. If we have Keita on the bridge, I don't see Keita on the bridge today. Okay. So this one was opened uh, due to an issue that was seen when spawning a thousand DHCP clients. And so this is part of some scalability testing. And then this is a fix for that issue. Any questions we need to take back to Keita? 
All right. Next item is 1431. This one is also from CATA and is in progress, DHCP responder inside BBSIM. And so this is similar to the previous one. The first was for EAPOL, this one's for DHCP. Okay, next item was a new defect open 1432. This was a segmentation error in get Gemport ID. And this was, again, one that was opened by Keita and is assigned to him as well for work during this sprint. And we have a description of that bug. Any questions we need to take back? Okay, next item, 1433. This was uh, one that was opened by Kailash. The Volta BB SIM build is broken and Keita has that assigned to him. And they're uh, looking into it, looks like it's suspected that this is resulting from a patch identified in the description field. So that's under investigation, I believe. Then the next item is 1434. This is related to ONUs after an OLT disable re-enable and some unexpected uh, behavior. Let me scroll down here. Shad, it looks like we do have you on the bridge. Would you like to briefly talk about this one? Yeah, so this is on Volta Master and um, I just uh, opened it to, to, to track it. Okay. Um, I mean, OLT disable, uh, re-enable is not a frequent operation, but uh, I just wanted to <clears throat> uh, track this issue. And it's on, it's happening on Volta Master, so so it's uh, Okay, thank you. Any what it's worth, OLT, OLT reboot um, also suffers from uh, weirdness, which may be related to this as well. Yeah, that's that's true. I mean, our, our QA uh, found uh, <clears throat> found the same issue of uh, OLT disable uh, disable uh, reboot that delete delete an OLT, not not a reboot, but uh, disable delete, and then uh, and then adding an or pre provisioning an OLT back again. Um, yeah, things uh, don't stay stable after that. Um, I didn't test that out, but I just tested a disable re-enable and uh, there are issues with that as well. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Yeah, um, the Chad, you might want to look at some of the um, device management that manages TCONs and uh, gym ports, because I had to do a little work on my side to properly restore those when you do a disable or disable delete on the OLT. That, okay, that should be yeah, part of it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, take a look at the log and see see your uh, commits uh, and, and look at that trend. Um, you said this is in the ONU adapter. Uh, would this be in the ONU adapter? Uh, no, uh, this is the OLT adapter. Um, okay. The ONU seemed to behave okay with Fine, with okay. The OLT. And Chad, it sounds like you'll be working on this one in Sprint 13, is that correct? Our current Sprint? Yeah, I'm, I'm this thing, I mean, um, I, I didn't know where to start from, but I'll, I'll start okay. taking it from uh, what, what Chip is suggesting, and, and uh, I didn't want to spend too much time on, on, on this uh, just right now, so I'll, yep. I'll take that as a background item, yeah. Okay, got it, thank you. So right. just just check just checking yeah. on, on that one, so the, um, the disable shouldn't be messing around with the T constant gems, right? It would only be the delete. Uh, the disable actually, the flows are removed when you do a disable command, so it should probably start removing T cons and gem ports at that point, maybe. Oh, I, th I thought we decided just to uh, admin lock the ONU when we disabled the the ONU instead of removing the flows. Yeah, I, I thought that was what 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 was happening earlier. So I didn't look at the code uh, at the current state, but uh, yeah, Chip, our early implementation was that we just lock the LAN ports of the ONU. Uh, that that's well, we, it was the, the ONU as a whole, I think. But but yeah, I mean that could yeah. be part of it as well. Okay. But yeah, I'm I'm not sure what's what's what the current implementation is. What's happening? So uh, somebody will have to take a look at the, at this uh, closely. 
Okay, thanks. Any other discussion on this today? All right, I think uh, that takes us through all of the new issues that have been opened. So I think I saw Sarisha, you're on the bridge. Hi, Julie. Yes, I just joined the bridge. Great, thanks for joining. So I think we'll go back to that. So, Sean, I think we'll move on to the IGMP uh, related discussion now. And Sarisha, do you have anything that you need to present? Um, no, not really. Okay, I'll just leave it up with my agenda screen then. Thanks. So I think, Sarisha, I think uh, the purpose is, you know, um, we we'll try to um, have the the participant of AT&T Park uh, in last year, in the, last, at the beginning of last year, and see how exactly the each, you know, um, participant support IGMP. Uh, Amit did a very good presentation, at, I believe, last week regarding to how things were done. So I don't know whether you're aware about that presentation, but is there something high level in a very short time? I know you you need to drop the call pretty soon too. Is there something um, you you can describe regarding to how exactly the IGMP uh, services was supported uh, in the pre-VOTA 1.0 release almost? Um, sure. I, uh, I think one thing I want to mention is that um, when you know, all the vendors did the POX during uh, the the previous uh, version of POX that we did with Volta 1.0. Um, the scope was mainly the OLTs and not the AG switch, and and therefore the um, application that was implemented in all was known as uh, IGMP proxy app. The scope that it no, knew was also only the OLT. So typically, what it, it would do is, I think I've seen. Um, um, Amit's document and um, it kind of describes that uh, what the IGMP proxy owners app does as well. Uh, it's it all the joins are sent reports and leaves are sent towards the app and app keeps you know the membership um, counts and then makes sure that it's actually populated well um, in the device. Uh, and the device, of course, takes care of you know configuring the hardware uh, for the multicast read application. Uh, that's the when I say the device here, the device that's under the control of that app was just the OLT. So there were like specific um, uh, configuration that was supported, and I think SADIS was able to do that as well uh, to specify, for example, what that link port to use um, to send the uh, reports up because there might be a switch upstream that's actually snooping or doing a proxy that would need to uh, do some similar function as well. Um, I believe for almost all the vendors that the POC, that upstream switch was completely outside of the scope of, you know, any owner's uh, fabric control or even app control. So that's essentially how it was done. Um, basically, the reports would get lifted up. Uh, and if, if it's like, for example, the first report, then it would actually, it was doing a proxy function. So it would be sent upstream. Um, and then in order to send upstream, we could specify which OLTs uplink port to use, which is basically the open flow port. And then it would just reinsert back on that port and that would be sent upstream. And assuming that somebody would process it and typically it would go to the BNG and the BNG would basically um, proxy it as well or peer it. Um, that was essentially what was done. And otherwise, you know, of course, uh, the IGMP proxy app also supported the um, the multicast tree in terms of maintaining it, learning it based on the reports and leaves, and also populating the OLT hardware for that. So that, does that uh, give you a rough idea? Uh, yeah, it's, it's just, um, <laughs> it's a lot of information, and you know, it's hard to Im 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 visualize that. So I would rely on other people to, the community members to, you know, Maybe uh, amid, I, I don't know whether um, if you're listening, whether that's also you know uh, uh, lined up with what you have captured today um, in your presentation. Um, one one thing is uh, so 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 the IGMP app. I think it was developed around at that time. So that the, the IGMP proxy app. Uh, I, I don't believe there's any update of the of the proxy app to, uh, since since then, right? So so. 
uh, we probably still need to verify that IGMP proxy app work with today's. Um, I don't see what, any reason why it won't, but at the same time, we probably still need to review the IGMP app. Um, do, do, uh, one thing, uh, Srisha, is, um, you know, it, it, you know, a lot of time when we're doing the, I think the BNG setup has a list of the, you know, the, the sort of like uh, the channel IP addresses, right? The, so the whole list of how many channels, maybe 4,000 channels. Um, are those information captured, it, it will also need to be captured in the Onos app or on the Volta site? So, um, well, I think we did uh, for the IGMP proxy. There was a allow all mode versus allow a set of multicast, um, you know, sources as well, configurable. Um, which basically is to see if you can join that particular source or not. And I think if you are asking about whether there is any um, kind of uh, control at even before the joints could come up to the OLT. That's something completely agnostic to that proxy app because it has to go a totally different route. Um, so, but yes, in, in the proxy app, there was configuration for uh, setting up, I think a range um, of what we could uh, allow uh, in terms of, it was not completely unconfigured. I think it was basically configured multicast from what I remember. Okay, so, so from, it's, it's, from 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 AT and T's point of view, um, we have historically had a very tight control on that, but our network has moved uh, to to basically a a somewhat wide open range. So um, we would not necessarily be needing a very detailed set of configurations, nor would we necessarily really want to manage a very detailed set of configurations in that type of thing. So. Uh, uh, a a enable all or a or a or a, or a wide range uh, would be uh, more than enough for for AT and T use cases. <clears throat> I'd have to really check, but I believe uh, I, I would I would think that there was a wild card available as well. But I'll have to check. I don't know for sure. I don't know if Amit. Do you remember? I'm not sure if Amit is on the call. Yes. Yeah, hello. Yeah, sure, sir. Uh, I don't recall uh, using that. Uh, yeah, using that feature. So I'd have to check on that. I believe it was possible, but we were able to set up a range of uh, source sources that that I'm I'm sure we were able to do it. But I'd have to check whether the wildcard was all or not. So so basically, I, I you know it's, it's, it's just double check. So the. I don't want to just you know. I think that's the only thing I understand on this one. <laughs> so. So the, the, you said the address is 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 the, the maintain the source IP address of the, the 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 content channels is maintained on the the IP app the the the, the IGMP proxy app not on the Volta side right? Correct. Okay. And I mean, so Volta is basically just um, acting kind of like a open flow relay. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's it's okay. does it yeah. Um. So, so Amit, I don't know whether you were able to clearly um, hear what uh, Srisha was describing. Uh, is that very similar to what the presentation you put together? Yeah, uh, so uh, apart from this part, right, where uh, we're talking about uh, the source specific thing, uh, the rest of the things is pretty much in line with uh, what is uh, described in what I presented. Okay. Yeah. Um, then one thing is, uh, I, I think, Srisha, you probably have not seen Amit's proposal. So uh, I think the IGMP multicast is very important for AT&T and Deutsche Telekom and also t other service providers at Turk Telecom. So we are hoping to, Julie, don't kill me, um, hoping to uh, have IGMP enabled, uh, you know, by the June time frame. So, so we definitely need to nail down the architecture and make sure you know what we've done before can be um, um, can be scaled um, and then can be uh, can can be put into the production. Um, one thing I I I would ass I'm assuming the AT&T IGM uh, the 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 IPTV model uh, IGM using the IP, uh, IGMP multicast is probably common among many of the service providers. 
So um, potentially, if there are uh, uh, implementation differences, maybe we, I mean, Bjorn, uh, maybe we need to think up, make sure whatever the proposal on the table will be able to is common among the service providers. Um, um, that's that's I have, and then the, so I do want to have basically this discussion today is just a kickoff. Um, I think there are additional things and details we need to work it out, um, and uh, and. Uh, in, for example, how you know how do we? I do believe the the open OT adapter probably need to also enable the IGMP related the, the functionality, right? So so I don't believe today the 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 open OT adapter has that enabled, um, and not not only on the provisioning side and the service content, right? And then we need to be able to make sure that the the, the video um, can sustain and also the, all the monitoring about IGMP messages monitoring stuff it probably also need to be supported um, so um, I think I'm going to call a pause here um, so anybody has any comment regarding to the IGMP support um, I'm wondering do we have uh, any support in on open loyalty uh, my assumption is we should also implement something related with in the open world to adapter. Is that right? Chad, can you? I, I, I do believe the open OT today does not support it. It just has not been enabled or some that part of because it's not part of the um, the the features we identified for the end of last year. So um, so it, the, I, I do believe the open OT some of the code need to be implemented. But there are um, the the multi case implementation has been done in other uh, OLT adapters like like uh, uh, I, I do believe the Atran has that and then the the, the old um, I don't believe the old ASF uh, V OLT sixteen has that um, but they are they are. Uh, other adapter was was verified during the park, but as, as I said, that was the Volta 1.0 release, and since then we have not maintained. Other than the Airtrain adapter, I don't believe we have uh, actively maintained the other adapters. Um, so, so at least I'm not aware of. Uh, so I do be I do believe there are work on the open OT side need to be need need to be done to enable those. Mm -hmm. um, And Suresh, yes. I think they, I think you can you can jump on the other calls. Uh, welcome back. Um, good to hear you. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, bye. Bye. Shad, are you still on? Okay. Um, I, I do believe the, the the some work need to be done on the open OT side. Sirkan, that's it, that, that, that does that answer your question? Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. ONU and, uh, as well, too, by the, way, the open OMCI ONU, um, there's no IGMP related uh, considerations there at all. So, it, I mean, for anything that was done pre 1.0, more or less has to be completely readdressed with open OLT and the uh, ONU adapter. Okay. Great. Um, <laughs> but I, but, but it, one thing I, 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 I kind of thought ONU might have it is because the the you know the the Broadcom ONU adapter sort of the inherit directly from the previous Sienna built like uh, Steve Crook built that one. Then that one was working uh, supporting the IGMP. But I don't know whether that some other function was not carry over. But thanks for uh, reminding us on that one. Um, yeah, in, uh, Sean and the ONU uh, during the POC three, it was just pretty much treated as a data channel, and that people set up gym ports. So all the features, all the MCAS features for, you know, pruning in, in groups that OMCI handles was probably not done on any any adapters. It was just playing whatever data came through. Okay. Okay. Can you translate that to the language that do we need to <laughs> well, well, <laughs> do we need well, to do something on the OMCI adapters side also? 
Yeah, and the IGMP uh, uh, proxy application, it, 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 the flow decomposer decomposes some rules uh, for what the ONU should receive. And those should be translated at the ONU into specific OMC IMEs to allow only certain, you know, destination IP addresses through certain channels. You know, it should only should filter using these OMC IMEs, and I don't okay. think anyone re-implemented those. Okay. So. Um, so that that um, but the OMC the the the, the, the OMC IME has been implemented. Oh. Yeah, so. it was it was treated as a data channel, so every every UDP stream that came through was sent to the uni. Okay. And the set top box was responsible for only listening to the channels it wanted. If that makes any sense. I, I'll pretend it makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, basically on a pond, if two people were listening to two different channels mm -hmm. uh, on two different ONUs, they both were the ONUs received the same both channels on the uh, multicast stream on the gym port and the ONU should prune off just what it needs but that wasn't okay. done in POC3. Okay okay so, or at least not to any of the public adapters. Right and then the, as I said the, the POC3 um, the, the way we set it up just in case some, some people may not know we do have a multiple um, set up box hang off from the RG, and then the RG has um, just one Ethernet link to the uh, to the ONU, and ONU only had one active UNI port, and then the PON interface is going out. So, um, so 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 it was. Uh, I think the maximum the TV were able to, to demonstrate was five at the same time. Um, but the, the 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 number of channel um, provided in the lab is not like a four thousand in the real life. So so I think the scalability of the IGMP um, uh, uh, potentially that will be also another issue we need to verify. Um, but uh, that was done uh, in the in the Austin lab in AT and T and also Ceremon lab in uh, in AT and T lab in Ceremon. Um, so so. I think they, as I said, you know, probably there are a lot of things we need to do to, you know, you know and maybe um, open some user stories to so formalize kick off the, the IGMP support. Um, again, so I, I do, like Sircon and Bjorn, you know, um, maybe maybe if there are anything different, then we need to socialize, with, you know, how exactly we, we can support this. Um, hopefully it's the same. Um, Anything um, other than that? Um, anything else? Okay, I think Julie, that's the conclude of today's discussion on IGMP. All right, thank you, Sean. So, can uh, I jump in just for yeah. a second, Julie? Um, sure. I just chatted with Nick Nick Kapakir this morning, and I don't know if people are aware, but he basically got deported. So he's looking for work. He, he and uh, he would be interested in contracting with it has to be a non US company. But if, if you're looking for somebody that knows this stuff to help push something forward, Nick is available while they, they straighten out his visa. And uh, you can contact me and I can set you up with Nick. That's great. Well, that's bad. And uh, I'm glad you, you're in touch with him, um, the guy. Thanks, okay. Sean. Thanks, Sean. All right. Then the next item I wanted to touch on today is so we have discussion going on on Volta Discuss on the repo strategy for 2.0. Wanted to see if uh, it makes sense to kind of recap with the group where we are today or if we need to just let this continue over Volta Discuss a little bit longer. We can have some time to discuss it today if that would be useful for, for the folks on the bridge. Any preferences? I think a recap would be good. All right, thank you. Uh, so Chip, the latest thing I have up here is, I think this was the 
unless something's come in since I started the call, this was the most recent addition to the discussion I had. So if you don't mind, I'll go ahead and start with you if you'd, if you'd like to kind of uh, summarize your proposal here or your, your latest comment. Yeah, well, I guess I'll re just recap the whole thing is, I guess the desire is to have adapters to have their own repos so that they're not tied to the VolfaGo core um, repo or versioning. And from the comments, that seems to be the preferred method for people that did actually do comments. And one of the questions I had was how best to handle uh, some of the Python libraries, you know, both for the database integration, alarms, KPIs that are not, that are shared among uh, device adapters. And so I posed the question, should these be one or more sets of uh, repos themselves that can actually be installed with pip install? So that, that would allow versioning of the specific um, function out, Python functionality that might help a lot with, uh, as people have different um, capabilities or different Volta core changes. So I was just putting out what, what's available or what's what's out there and what people might want to do. Thanks, Chip. Any input from others? Oh, can, can we just change PKI to be KPI? If I if I'm assuming that PKI right. is um, security <laughs> certificates. Key performance. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, my, my comments would be it's uh, in terms of the uh, repos per se, we could go with uh, uh, every single component uh, having their repo. Like uh, in terms of, um, and here I'm talking mostly about the libraries, the, kind of the shared libraries. We can have uh, the, the only thing I I think it, it. I don't know if it's going to be an overkill uh, because some of those libraries are very specific uh, for Volta, and there's not a lot of code there. So I, I don't know if it's worthwhile to put them into their own uh, repo or combine any libraries that we need uh, shared for Python to put them together. Like, I can go both ways. It's just for me, it's more like a, I don't know if it's going to be an overkill by having uh, too many repos for each one of those libraries. Like if uh, if uh, if we end up having another uh, component that we want to share uh, that doesn't fall in the common, that uh, is something different, then we'll have to create yet again another repo uh, for that library. I don't know what uh, what the community thinks about that. So to give a perspective um, from going through this transition, um, the other court projects, um, when you put things together, you end up having um, them sort of, they have to be tested, and the whole repo has to be tested, and sometimes versioning gets applied to the whole repo unless you have some other strategy to version individual pieces within the repo. Um, you can do it either way, but if there's a if if there's a large collection of things that are small and don't mind being versioned together, it's okay to put them in a repo. But if they're going to have um, sort of wildly different release cycles, then separating them out usually makes more sense. It's really a case by case basis, but I I agree with um, Ken that that's. Uh, that we should probably look at the individual pieces of code we want to share between adapters and the core and that sort of thing. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, Zach. Any other feedback from folks on the bridge? So I don't hear I don't hear comments. Does it mean it's a uh, it's a go? Julie, is that your your interpretation too? I think I'm not hearing any disagreement. So probably what I'd like to see, and I'll see if this makes sense to the folks who've been involved in the discussion on Volta Discuss, uh, try and finalize the the path forward, and then we can close this and maybe give a 
uh, a recap of the the final decision on Thursday's call. Would that work? That's great. That'd be good. Okay. Okay. All right. So we'll let the the we've had some input today. So thank you, everyone, and then continue uh, kind of just documenting the final decision on both to discuss if there are any additional details to work out there and then we'll do a recap and capture it in the uh the thursday meeting to nail it down okay thanks everyone then let me go back to the agenda okay so the the next item i have here is updates for uh the sprint 13 status uh, Sean, Miss said, I think you're still on the bridge, and Sarev, I see you as well. As part of that, I thought maybe we'd briefly touch on the tech profile work in, I'm trying to find the right screen here, sorry, the tech profile work in sort of one lump at the moment to see if there are items, I know we have the brigade going on, working on that right now on the 1.x branch. I wanted to see if there are items we need to bubble up for discussion with a larger group on today's call for the for the work going on, or if there are obstacles we need to get other people engaged with in order to move the tech profile work forward. Uh, I don't think there's anything. Okay, thanks, Sara. All right, I have one item, just some cleanup, I think. I think for Vol 736, we need to find a new assignee for it, since I believe Cora is not working on this anymore. So yeah, I think we'll Gems is so, working on it. Yeah, so okay. Gems is working on it, and I I believe she's done. So um, I'm going to review it today and very likely merge Great. it. Okay, thank you. All right, then let me go back and we'll start uh, catching up on some of the status updates. Uh, I think I saw Keita. Yes, I'm on. Bridge. Yes, okay, thank you. And so we went over some of your new issues on the uh, first part of the call and we didn't have any questions to take back to you. So thank you for getting those opened up. And uh, any status updates we need for BB Sim for the 1355 is the one I think I have opened that you're working on for support per ONU control. Uh, yes, uh, this task is for, you know, uh, supporting for ONU control in BDSM. Um, however, now, you know, we are changing the architecture of BBSM so that, you know, I want to let you know if, how to say, uh, if the architecture is settled down and, uh, how to say, yeah. Uh, uh, okay, anyway, um, I, I will, you know, change this. Uh, tasks uh, status after completing the change of BBC okay. architecture. Okay, thank you. So actually, uh, Keta, uh, aren't we tracking BBC in the Siba Jira? Mm -hmm. Are we not tracking BBC development in the Siba Jira? Siba Jira? Yes. Okay. Could you say it again? There, Are you there, are you creating what? stories in the Siba Jira? Oh uh, yes, this is right. the Volta Jira, right? Yes, this is the Volta Jira. So you know, I'm a little confused about which uh, which Jira task I need to create when okay. I have some tasks. So uh, okay, M maybe I wasn't clear. I think we should track that in Siba mm -hmm. uh, simply because um, whatever we do in BBSIM should have actually nothing to do with Volta. Okay, I got it. So I right. will, it yes. should not require any changes in Volta mm -hmm. uh, to develop BBSIM. Okay, I got it. Am I um, making sense? Yeah, okay. Let me talk to you offline about that. We shouldn't need to track BBSIM in, in, in Volta. Okay, got it. So, you know, I will um, make a task or story uh, from next time in SIVA project, not Volta project, Jira. Okay, so when I asked you last night to create stories, uh, you did them in Volta, Jira? G uh, no, uh, I created Siva Jira stories linked to Siva DBC, you know, okay. Epic. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks, Keita. Thanks, Sarah. 
then I think the next item I wanted to check on was um, was thirteen seventeen. So Chip, this was one of yours you're working on with open OMC, not enforcing stop and wait protocol. I noticed on a number of tickets, this is one of them, we're having Jenkins issues again with minus ones. Is there anything we need to to discuss with the group? I'm not sure why we're seeing a lot of those again. Might be just coincidence. Oh, we may have lost Chip. Uh, no, I mean, I'm, oh. I think people have been seeing that, um, but I do have, a, I've still, I've been pulled off on working on something else right now, but I'm, when I get back to it, I still have a, another push to do. Okay. And I think that sometimes if it fails, you can just go in and, and do a small base mod and see if it passes. So that's, okay. that's not holding me up. So. Okay, great. And, and I think once you were done with that one, you were going to move on to, uh, to more stuff with 1336. So I think we can move over that right now. And the tech profile, we were handling those via the brigade at the moment. So I'll move on to 1392. And this one, Girish, let me see if we've got you on the bridge. I don't see Girish on the bridge today. So I think we'll skip over a status on that one. And then uh, the next one is related to the tech profile work. So we'll move on that one as well. And the 1395 chip that you have assigned to you, I think this is related to some of the discussion we've been having with the repos as well. Sorry, so which, which, uh, uh, which item did you skip over for Girish? Uh, 1393, uh, implement meter features reply. In yeah, OMC. that's that's merged. Um, oh, oh. Yeah, he's already done that. That's part of the brigade work. Okay, this one it shows as open. Oh, but does it? We started yeah, so it last night. Minus one. Yeah, we reviewed it last night and our build failed. Okay, yeah, it might be just a small thing. Okay. Um, we'll we'll look at it. It's not a big deal. It'll, it'll merge today. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, then. Uh, see find where I was okay and then we have some work going on in the core uh, 1399 is in progress I think by Richard I don't think I see anything in Garrett yet for that there were a couple in here that I think may be complete uh, this one is the first submission for us I think that's still in progress on 1405 um, yeah, 1405, I think 1405 is complete. Okay, I'll move that over to done. Thank you, Ken. And then let me scroll down a little further. So another one I had to check on was 1416, because this one looks like it is closed as well. Dynamic state change is not correctly detected. So this is when Sergio was working on. Do you know the status for that? I, I will need to double check that one because okay. he, he, made, yeah, he made some changes. So I'm, I'm not so sure whether it was about this one or another Jira. Okay, I can check with Sergio on that as well. And okay. then uh, 1423 was one from Richard for a single node Kubernetes environment does not support ePoll testing with PondSim. It looks like there was a that one is closed out in Garrett as well. Is that one complete? Yeah, that one is complete, yes. Okay, I'll move that over. Thank you. And then uh, we had one from Shad. Are you still on the bridge? Of this is done. Okay, that's what I thought. Thank you. And then 1430 and 31, we just spoke about earlier on the bridge. So I think that takes us through the in progress. We still have a number on the to do category that, yes. Uh, Sean, I actually, I think you're on mute, so I can hear your question, but I just realized you're not on the bridge. The last two, uh, those for Kerasan, right? So those yes. two will be moved to the CBA, right? Yes, That's right. That's right. Like. Yeah. So I see it down here. It's duplicated by the CBA, CBA item. 
Yes, okay. I did it. Yeah. Remove that from, from Volta tracking. Got it. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Other questions? Okay. Then I think probably that's about what we needed to cover for the status updates today. So again, the tech profile work is 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 moving along with the brigade. We have a number of other items in flight, and uh, then a number waiting in the to do queue to be picked up as resources are available as well. Do we have any specific items that the group would like to look at in more detail today? Julie, so uh, sorry, I was uh, multitasking. So, Sarab, since you're on the call, so, so um, can you give us a very brief update regarding to the brigade? It seems like very active, so that sounds like a very good progress there. Sure. Um, we are okay. So let me talk about the uh, tech profiles brigade first. Okay. Uh, we um, so Gums is handling um, uh, the owner side changes uh, and both. Uh, OF agent, uh, Girish and Gamze are both looking at different parts of it. Um, Volta Core, uh, also uh, Gamze is taking over some of the uh, Korai's work. Um, and in Open OLT, Shad and um, Girish um, uh, are, are uh, implementing it. So they are sort of Open OLT uh, adapter and driver is right now separate from um, the ONOS VCOR um, OF agent parts. Um, they are being separately developed. Um, and I suspect it's going to take another week or so to finish that work, go through reviews, get purged. Um, after that, we actually have to bring those two pieces uh, together. We have to tie them together. Um, and actually test things out on hardware and, and see that uh, we're having the desired effect. So it's, yeah, I mean, by the end of next week, we should be able to start doing the, that integration between the top half and the bottom half uh, pieces of this work. Um, Sriju has joined the brigade uh, from Jabil. He's uh, interested in uh, manually testing this work as well, uh, besides what uh, we will do. And uh, at some point when this work is complete, there will be a need, um, and uh, actually Sean Misset brought this up, there will be a need to try and see if we can get someone like Spirant or Rixia um, involved uh, to to really ensure that um, all the all the queuing and the scheduling that we uh, are implementing actually is doing exactly what it needs to do. There's there are a lot of things we can try uh, in what, uh, potential. Yeah, they do. It would be great if a vendor can join. But at the same time, I think uh, the Austin Lab do they are equipped to do some of the testing on that. So. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. So so maybe I can check with Sunny. Yeah, I'll check with Sunny. That's great. Um, yeah. So it's going along, and uh, um, I, uh, I'm feeling positive about it. So, yeah, we'll update more as we um, uh, maybe sometime in in a couple of it, weeks. Yeah. Is there any on you side work that need to be done? So right, all I heard right now is on the you know OF, OF agent yeah. and the core. And yeah, yeah. Sean. The the OCI, the OCI messages are required from the ONU adapter to go and set up the you know, the PBIT mapper and the gem ports associated with the TCON. So that I mean that that is part of this. The ONU adapter needs to support the additional provisioning with the OMCI MEs for that. So Garish is uh, working on that. Okay. Oh, so Garish is working on that. Uh, and then uh, uh, I thought about something I forgot. But, uh, oh, do you want to hear about the BBC Brigade? 
no, 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 uh, no, uh, no, no. It's, it's still within the the brigade. Oh, um, uh, so we're touching the we're touching the OF agent, all that kind of stuff, right? That 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 is is there a dependency on the ONOS release? I don't believe so. Not in this part. Um, there is functionality. Um, this is a particular part of the protocol that requires you to uh, implement a feature called write metadata. And write metadata is uh, was already there in ONOS, but la wasn't there in OF agent. Mm -hmm. um, so we added that, um, or we are in the process of adding that. There was another thing called meter features reply. And again, it was there in the ONOS side. It was making a request but OF agent wasn't replying. So Girish added that. Um, no, it's really just uh, things that were incomplete on the OF agent side that we are getting done. Okay. Um, and also, I think some of, I'm, I'm wondering, so right now it's only ONU and then we're still looking at Alpha Network and the ONU, right? So, um, okay. Let me double check with Sunny and see whether they can have they, they have they have something they can do also um, we're not ready for them but we will be in, uh probably in two or three weeks yeah it'd be good to have an outline of a, a test yeah. plan of how qos would be tested sure but again you know if we can get spiral or nectar uh, scr involved that 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 it's Ixia or Net, it's not, <laughs> well, sounds like Netsia. Uh, Ixia involved, uh, you know, that's, that, that's community work that also, I think that, that, that would be great too. But uh, let me check with us, um, ONF. Um, I may suggest Sunny to join the brigade next week. Sure. Okay, thanks, Sean. Uh, thanks, Sarav. Any other comments on, on the, those topics at the moment? Okay, no. we're. Oh, sorry. So, so, so Rob, it, it seems like you, you want to talk about the certification brigade here, or you want to talk in the CBA call later? Uh, no, certification brigade is in the CBA call. I was okay. mentioning about the other brigade was the BB Sim brigade, which is, oh. um, um, uh, which is an attempt to make BB Sim itself scale, um, so that it can measure focal scale. Uh, and we are re-architecting some of the internals of BBSIM. That's just what Kieta was referring to. Uh, earlier, BBSIM used to, um, much like Ponsim, uh, it used to create real WPS applicants and real DHCP clients. And uh, there's a limit to how many of those you can actually create in a container. Um, so we have now, uh, moved into creating our own state machines for um, uh, EFO and, and, and uh, for DHCP uh, inside BBSIM. And uh, Kieta has made excellent progress in finding the libraries for doing some of that. So there's good progress also happening on that front. Um, folks from Netsia, Mahir, Sarkant also attend the brigade calls. Um, we recently had North Forge also wanting to uh, attend the brigade call. So that's also going pretty well. Thank you, Great. Sarah. All right, any other questions or comments on, on the active brigades? All right, then uh, what we have on slate for Thursday's call right now is from Bjorn, we'll have an overview of the Deutsche Telekom FTTB solution. And then also, as we mentioned on this call, we'll recap uh, the decision on the repo strategy for 2.0. And then we have a number of items still in the backlog for future discussions. Uh, one of those being the proposed design for the Go-based OpenOLT adapter. And then also, uh, Close behind that, we have a, a on, on priority of the list, I would say, is the multiple TCON support and use cases related. So, Sean, I think there may be some related discussion on SIBA as well, but we can follow up later. Uh, any additional topics that need to be covered that you do not see on this list for future deep dive discussions? 
Uh, Julie, just a, just a small remark from, from my side that's gone. Uh, I think I will not need more than 30 minutes for, for, for this FCB overview, okay. but it's absolutely the maximum. So if, if you have other items to, to cover on a Thursday call, feel free to schedule. Great. Thank you. All right. Any other topics for Thursday that people would like to dive into? Okay, so we'll keep it as this for now. Uh, we'll see if anything else that comes up between now and Thursday. And with that, I think we will wrap up the call. We've got about four minutes I can give back to you. Not so, much. Julie, oh, maybe um, not. <laughs> no, 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 no. I just want to remind people, um, the, the community, like uh, we're going to have a face-to-face -face meeting for VOTA and SIBA. Um, so the, 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 I think the Sarab, we need to work with you on the SIBA side, the topic to, to address. But the, the date will be the week of March 25th. So the, the meeting is on the 26th, 27th, and 28th. Uh, I'm scheduling three days meeting. Uh, and then the Monday and Friday for people to travel. Um, ATRAN is hosting the, the, the meeting uh, in Huntsville. So there is a map I'm going to send out. And potentially, there will be, a, you know, if, if ATRAN can provide the hotel rate, uh, we, we, uh, we, we will provide those information to the participants here too. Also, face-to-face uh, -face meeting definitely, you know, uh, lock everybody down so we can work out details. I think we have a very uh, active session on 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 um, uh, last year in in Dallas. So we want to see what we want to be able to move forward on this one. Also, sorry for changing the dates back and forth. But right now, the, the, the date has, we have set is uh, March 26, 27, 28 in Huntsville, Alabama. Alabama. So, Sean, did it, it sounded to me like you're going to be sending out a separate email to Volta Discuss that includes the map that, and yes. other things. Okay, got it. Thank you. Any questions for Sean on the planned lockdown? I think uh, remote access. Uh, is also necessary. Will that be provided? We will. Uh, we will do that too. Yes. Okay. Other questions? Okay. I think we'll wrap up today. Thanks everyone for the discussion, and I will stop the recording.